next step on this assembly is going to be to remove the pistons. I've got the piston diapered with some uh, shop towel just in case I drop the circlip so I don't have to go hunting for it but we are going to split the case so it won't be a problem. I've got a supporter with uh, an old brush here just because the piece of wood handle was small enough to slide underneath the piston just to help hold it steady while I'm digging the uh, circlip out which holds the piston pin in place, the wrist pin and you can see here what I do is I just got underneath it with uh, a, a probe here, a, a puller um, sharp tool, <laughs> a pick, curve pick, that's what I'm trying to say uh, a sharp uh, curve pick got in behind it, there's a little divot right there you can see right there is a little spot where you can get the tip of the tool in up underneath the pin and then just get right underneath it and pull it out towards you. Um, I'm going to finish pulling this out and then we'll pull the uh, wrist pin out which is the piece of steel that the piston rides on and then the piston should be free. Each of the pistons is marked on top if you can see that there is a dimple and that dimple is telling you uh, orientation of the piston. One pistons, of course uh, for your front cylinder, one for the rear one for the rear has a dimple facing towards the rear one for the front it's facing towards the front and I'm also going to mark the piston as suggested on the skirt uh, with some uh, indelible marker to identify the front and rear cylinders so that they go back in the same place that they came out of so that's the process we're doing right now I've got my retaining circlip free and you do this on the side away from the cam chain by the way if you try to do it from the side of the cam chain it's a lot more difficult so do it on the side away from the cam chain pull your circlip then your wrist pin out and your piston off of the connecting rod let me take another shot here of uh, this is the wrist pin partially removed in case it wasn't obvious what I'm talking about when I say wrist pin this is it partially pushed out I pushed out from the pushed in from the other side uh, with a long bladed screwdriver gently so I don't scratch up anything and just worked it back and forth just working the piston sideways pushing keeping pressure on the back side of this wrist pin and it started walking out for me no problem so I'm going to finish pulling that out and take piston off the connecting rod Okay, both pistons are off. Connecting rods resting gently against the case. And we're ready to move on. I did pull off, uh, since the last video, I did pull the side cover off here on the clutch side uh, just because I was getting a little concerned with the chrome surface if I was going to scratch it up. So I cheated. I didn't show you that. Simply held in place by a whole bunch of M4. Uh, chrome or zinc covered uh, bolts make sure that you mark them as to which hole they came out of because they are different lengths I've got it written down in my manual uh, bolt for bolt right on the picture that shows you the cover right beside each bolt hole I've got it marked so that I know exactly uh, which bolt length goes in which hole clutch packs already out because I had removed it earlier um, so this is where your clutch would normally sit, your clutch plates would normally sit inside of that area and when we get to reassembly I'll show you how all that goes together. So right now we're at the point where it's time to pull the cam chains, cam chains and cam guides. Cam guides and then of course the, uh, the tensioner. So we'll be taking care of that next and that's going to involve uh, pulling off the side cover over here if I remember correctly I'll have to look at my procedure again but that's next first of all we're going to strip off the covers on the left side and then get my handy dandy rotor holder on there loosen the rotor nut and hopefully with a couple of soft taps she'll pop off of the uh, taper and come to me 
I'm hoping I don't have to use a puller. Um, or if I do, that it pops off pretty easily. So that's what's next. And I'll continue the video once I get the cover off. Basically, we're going to remove all these volt bolts all the way around. And then pull this cover off. And then I'll, uh, I'll continue to shoot after that. I almost forgot to point out, uh, when removing the pistons off the connecting rod, uh, in order to get to the circlip, uh, and of course this is from the other side, but just so that I could work around the piston more easily, I did remove the oil tube. Oil tube goes down inside here. You can see the, the boss, the area where it goes right there. There's an O-ring on this end, O-ring on the top end and it appears that it's it's definitely the same on both ends so you can go up one side up or the other but it just fits in there like so give it a little push and that's it it's in but it's also in the way so i removed it so it wouldn't be in the way while i was working there so i just want to point that out that i did pull those out of the way while removing the pistons pistons are going to go in the bag get labeled together with the wrist pin and the oil tube for the respective side and then we're going to get this cover off as promised. Okay, the rotor cover is off. There's the beautiful rotor. There's the lovely stator on the inside of the cover. There is quite a magnetic pull, by the way, between the two. And that magnetic field in the presence of a rotating mass is how it generates electricity for the bike. Um, when you get it free, make sure you got all the bolts out, of course. Even at that, with the magnetic pull that's going on, um, it's going to feel like you've forgotten something, even though you can see clearly see all the bolts are out. There's nothing to engage. That stator is sitting inside this area here. So the magnetic pull is really strong. You just have to work, work to the point where it's free of the dowels that in my case are you know, still in the casing. They might stay in the crankcase on yours. But make sure that you're free of the dowels. Once you're free of the dowels, then you can go ahead and exert a little more force and just pull straight out. Don't angle it at all so you don't damage anything. Okay, next thing is to get a rotor holder on this rotor so that we can hold it still while I'm doing the rotor retaining bolt right here in the center. Okay, sports fans, the rotor retaining bolt is out. Now let me point out something fairly quick here. The rotor retaining bolt is an M17 operator, and that looks to be a uh, maybe an M12 bolt. I didn't put a mic on it yet, but it threads into the end of the crankshaft. Okay, you can see it in there. That's where she goes, down inside there. You can also see that the inside of the rotor is threaded, and it's larger than the end of that crankshaft, okay, where the retaining bolt goes. So, the manual calls for handy dandy rotor removal tool. Well basically what it is is a giant M19 bolt which is going to go in there and keep screwing in until it contacts the end of that crankshaft and when you keep turning it it's going to exert force on these threads and pull the rotor right out to you. Take it off the end of the taper. So uh, let me check my pockets. No I don't have it. So since I don't have a rotor holder um, or a rotor removal tool, excuse me. I'm going to uh, go and see where I can find the longest M19 bolt that I can with that nice coarse thread. And we'll just thread it in there and it should do the same job. So that's where I'm at. I need to get this rotor off. What you don't want to do is pry between here and here because that's a sealing surface. Okay, that's where you're going to seal to make sure oil doesn't splash and leak everywhere. So you don't want to be prying against that surface. Surface, And on top of that, you've only got so much room to a certain point where it becomes so tight you couldn't get in there anyway. 
there simply is no room to get a pry bar or pry tip in there anyway so don't even bother to try it it's on there with quite a bit of force so it's not coming on undone easily you're going to have to use the uh, threads that are provided in the manner that's provided to remove it don't necessarily have to have a kawasaki tool uh, if you've got a nice long threaded bolt so we're going to try that first and see if that doesn't pop it off there for us uh, interestingly enough also the rotor holder that I had is not suitable for this rotor it's suitable for holding that sprocket on the end of this final drive shaft that's what it works for so that's not that tool is not going to work inside this bore it's not the right size it's obviously a different rotor holder uh, so what I did was I cheated and took my handy dandy torque wrench and impact wrench excuse me and uh, applied enough torque to pop it off there because with an impact wrench it's like hitting it with a hammer and you just got to be gentle with it this one I believe was a Harbor Freight yeah, but it had selectable torque uh, ranges on it you know one two three four five so I set it to three and took my time with it and it wasn't like five seconds it spun right out for me so you, know, you want to be judicious about that don't use full torque because if you snap it off now you're trying to get a bolt stud out of a crankshaft you don't want to be doing that you don't want to be that guy Continuing with our rotor removal, um, I know I said M19 before for this fastener, but I was mistaken. It happens. Um, it's actually an M20, and I found uh, in looking around, better than a bolt, our friends at uh, Motion Pro make flywheel pullers in different sizes I couldn't tell precisely if that was an 18 or a 20 so I went ahead and got both they weren't expensive uh, it's basically it is a threaded bolt but it's case hardened it's tool steel and it's made for the job this is the M20 by 1.5 thread right hand thread and all you do is thread it right in there once you got it in there tight, do not give in to the urge to put an impact wrench on it. You take a regular wrench, like so. Okay, oop. Let's try the 22 in. Okay. And I just commence to smack it with a hammer. Now, you would think that's the same thing as an impact wrench, but it's not. Me smacking it with a ball peen a few times, gently and repeatedly is not the same as what an impact wrench can put out and after a few good whacks I would say 10 or 12 times it finally got to the point where it was free and now Mr. Rotor is ready to come off to me like so it sits on that taper there's our cam chain all piled up so I'm gonna set this aside safely somewhere put my tool up and then we can go ahead and remove this bolt take out the cam guide take out the cam chain and then move on to the other side so I want to correct myself on that that's not an M19 it's an M20 by 1.5 millimeter thread we are now on the other side of the uh, crankcase right side getting ready to pull this cam chain free and primary gear is in the way so uh, the only way to get this bolt loose easily is to jam something between these gears now I've got a motion pro gear jammer um, but it looks like uh, I might need another one kind of damage a tip on uh, it when I was getting the uh, rotor loose, but another thing you can try is a copper washer um, And you're wondering to yourself where do I get a copper washer? Well this mangled little piece of copper which gave its life for the process uh, was just a, uh, a brake washer 
Same type of washer you use for doing brake systems. I just happen to have a pack of those. I guess a penny would probably do as well. Uh, simply jammed it right here and commenced to do the same deal on this bolt as I did on the other side. Now it's free and I can pull my clutch assembly entirely out of the way, pull the primary gear out of the way, take the chain out, take the tensioner uh, body out, and then I need to take our balancer gears free. Uh, balancer gears, I'm going to need to actually put the rotor back on temporarily on the other side and jam its gears in order to bust that bolt free. So that's what we're working on right now and I'll set this down once all this is clear we'll pick up again. Poof! Clutch basket is gone. I wanted to point out as I'm pulling out this last washer that it definitely has a front side and a back side. You can see it's got the polished flat surface coming off towards you on the back it's beveled and that bevel surface goes against the crankcase bearing surface you can see how they're made to match each other so the application of force is all right there in that inner race once everything's tightened up okay so just want to point that out don't put it in backwards when you reassemble it there is a needle bearing in the middle of the, uh, the clutch basket. I was careful to keep that in place and the center sleeve is also still in place just to try to keep everything uh, together. Primary gear comes off next. And it has a nice big washer on it it appears. quite a bit of oil. Set that there to drain. And off comes your primary gear. Now the primary gear also has a front and a rear surface. As you're pulling this off, if you look the other side, it's got a boss that sticks out. That boss is supposed to go towards the cam chain. Okay, so note that. And I don't see any other timing marks on it, so I believe it can go in in any position. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. And we'll pull her out and set her down. There we go. Let that drain for a little bit into the towel. Go ahead and remove our uh, two bolts here for the cam guide, or for the cam ten chain tensioner, excuse me, and then pull the chain off. I think they might even be able to get the chain off now. Yeah, no, not quite enough clearance at the bottom right here. Got to have this off first. Okay, folks. So after that, as promised, we'll come back around here, temporarily reinstall the rotor so I can jam, I can jam uh, the left balancer gear teeth against it, and we'll loosen uh, this bolt and the one on the other side, and then we're getting close. I've got a couple of oil tubes here I got to address, and then we're getting close, close to splitting the case. Okay, the left balancer uh, retaining bolt's been removed, and I wanted to point out something that the manual points out. There is a timing mark, and it is really hard to see. Let's see if I can even get it to focus on this. Oh, right there it is. Do you see that? There is a dimple on the balancer itself, and there's a matching dimple on the end of the shaft and the one on the end of the shaft is so tiny I almost didn't see it. You really have to look for it. Let's see if I can get it to focus on. There we go. When those are lined up then the timing is right for the balancer. The balancer is in its balanced position. So for reassembly make sure that you pay attention to that. Okay. 
Now that gear will come off fairly easily. Add it to my hand. Set that down. And ready to extract uh, the shaft out the other side.